Colin Kaepernick. We go to Vegas. Rolling the dice. You talk about rolling the dice here. Yeah, things I did not expect to be talking about on the radio when I went to bed in the morning and then got up in the afternoon for a thousand, Alex. But here we are. That is where Colin Kaepernick in Vegas, hanging out. That's our lead this hour. Uh, was working out on Wednesday. If you have not heard yet, and if you're not a regular listener, maybe you were doing something else and you haven't been listening, uh, one of the big stories of the sporting day, we were told that Colin Kaepernick worked out. He completed his physical exercise, his audition with the Raiders on Wednesday. This the first official workout with an NFL team since he was benched for Blaine Gabbert with the 49ers in 2016. Kaepernick has pretty much self-destructed uh, every opportunity that could have come his way. The Seattle Seahawks were supposedly interested. They talked to him a few years back. He had a workout, famous workout in 2019 where, that went completely haywire, completely off the tracks. And so here we are, Colin Kaepernick, a firebrand quarterback, the leader of the anti-cop movement and uh, anti-United States movement. He is up for an NFL job. He sued the NFL. He took a check. He got a hush-hush settlement from the NFL. And here we are uh, rehashing leftovers yet again as a Las Vegas is flirting with Colin Kaepernick. So let us discuss the question, why? Why did the Raiders go forward with this Colin Kaepernick workout? So revenge is the reason, but I'll expand on that. I've got paranoia, milking, and stockpile. And we will combine all of these things together. So I'm going to put my tinfoil hat on for this one. Okay, number one! Number one! This has all the makings of a good old-fashioned publicity stunt, and it has already played out. An old, old school marketing gimmick. And, but I, I'm going with revenge. I'm going to make my elevator pitch why I believe this is revenge. It doesn't get as much attention. Most of the focus, when you think of NFL owner scandal, involves Dan Snyder, the drama right, that's going on with him. He uh, it was the owner of the Redskins. Now he had to change the team name. People thought that would end it. Well, now they're still trying to drive him out as the owner of the Washington football team. Well, the silver and black are also involved in scandal. And uh, if you look at the last couple of years here, and really just the last year, John Gruden forced out email. We'll talk more about his day in court later, but John Gruden email situation uh, some private emails that he thought uh, would never see the light of day, saw the light of day 10 years later. There was a witch hunt to get him removed as Raiders coach, and they succeeded. Now he's suing everyone. Uh, Henry Ruggs, first-round draft pick out of Alabama, who uh, was the NFL player for a very brief amount of time and then went out all boozed up at felony driving while intoxicated, and he hit a poor young lady and her dog who burned up alive. Uh, in the car, and uh, now Henry Ruggs is facing a very lengthy time in jail. You have Mark Davis, the owner, and that's the main event here. Mark Davis, that's the star of the show. Mark Davis has been under attack. Now, he doesn't get as much attention as Dan Snyder because of several reasons, but Mark Davis, there was a hit piece done by the New York Times about the Raiders being in disarray, bad financial, uh, bad bean counting, mismanagement, uh, there were NDAs, unpaid bills, all of that. And so now you have this public flirtation doing the mating dance with Colin Kaepernick. So I've done the arithmetic, and based on the Maller math, I'm going conspiracy here, but it all points to one thing. This workout for Kaepernick with the Raiders was a byproduct of the paranoia of the owner of the team, Mark Davis, Believes the NFL is out to get him. He, he thinks the walls are caving in. That they're going to force him to sell the team because of these scandals. And what better way, if you believe you're going to lose the team that's been the family business since you were a little boy uh, and you're going to lose the Raiders, what better way to get comeuppance than do a public dance with the arch villain of NFL owners? Hello, Colin Kaepernick, 
a troublemaker for the NFL who has attempted to undermine the league, and now here he is working out with an NFL team. And Mark Davis has owned the Raiders since his, obviously since his father passed away, his, his, uh, his old man, Al Davis, the patriarch of the Raider franchise there, passed away in 2011. And randomly, out of the blue, Vegas is all of a sudden interested in Colin Kaepernick. Man, does that smell. <laughs> smells like a rat to me. I don't know about you, but that's what it smells like to me. Even if the Raiders are using Kaepernick as a pawn, let's say they don't sign Kaepernick. They just worked him out. That's it. It's still an annoyance for the NFL owners. That's the point I'm trying to make. Something that, of course, they won't say publicly. Publicly, they have to have one position. Privately, like politicians, they have a different uh, perspective on this. And so it's off-the-record commentary. Now, it takes two to tango here. So the second part of this, what is Colin Kaepernick's motivation? The guy's past his athletic prime. He's a washed-up has-been at this point, Kaepernick, at age 34. Most rational adults, if you chose a career out of college and you couldn't find employment for five years, five years in your chosen profession, most people would say, okay, I need to do something else. I got to change industries. But not this guy. No, 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 no. Uh, The NFL had sent a clear message. They had informed Kaepernick through their actions that they don't want it. Nevertheless, He has continued to campaign for a job. So what's in it for Kaepernick? Well, this is all about marketing. This is all about marketing. Do you think Kaepernick wants to go be some backup quarterback with the Raiders? No. This is Kaepernick milking the cash cow, sending out sizzle videos, uh, sizzle reel videos there, and and, throwing stuff out. But that only gets you so far. you got to keep your name in the headlines, keep it fresh. The Kaepernick story is pretty much played out at this point for most people. They're just tired of it. It, it, it. People have their opinions. No one's changing their opinion. It's stale, moldy bread, right? You're just you're you're shouting at the wind. Uh, and if you're on one side, you're not going to convince somebody on the other side, and vice versa. And so you you need to add another chapter to kind of freshen things up a little bit. Kaepernick has a very big financial stake. He's got a big money deal. He's in partnership, a collaboration with Spike Lee. Uh, The documentary filmmaker Spike Lee is chronicling Colin Kaepernick's efforts to return to the NFL. And now the Raiders will have a starring role. Whether they sign Kaepernick or not, they will have a starring role in this documentary, which means if I am right, and this is payback because the Raiders owner, Mark Davis, is paranoid that he's going to lose the team. And and if I'm right about that, and the Kaepernick documentary, that means this is a mutually beneficial workout. A little friends with benefits, right? Everyone's happy, work out, rah, rah, get a little free publicity for Kaepernick, and Mark Davis gets to stick it to the other NFL owners, so it's a win-win. All right, final point. Do the Raiders go forward? Do they actually sign Kaepernick? Do they have a legitimate need for Colin Kaepernick? And that's the part of the story which blows me away. They don't need Colin Kaepernick. You think of quarterback needy teams that you could justify working out Kaepernick. Seattle, Carolina are at the very top of the list. The Raiders are either in the middle or they're lower down because there is no supply shortage in Vegas for the the quarterback position, position. The Silver and Black have a stockpile of quarterback. And they have, over the last couple of months, accumulated a full depth chart. They reworked Carr's contract to keep him around. They traded for Jared Stidham, the coach's pet from the Patriots, a protege, someone who learned under Josh McDaniels, signed Nick Mullins, who will play for the 49ers. He's bounced around the NFL since then, but not not a terrible third-string quarterback. And they also signed... They mean the Raiders, an undrafted free agent, some guy named Chase Garbers. I don't know who that is. I'm sure he's a nice guy. Uh, but but Kaepernick, the, the positive, he's well-rested, hasn't played a game in the NFL since the 2016 season. But regardless of all that, there is no pressing need here for the Raiders. 
And if you weigh the positives and the negatives, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So I keep going back to Mark Davis and his situation. And so he will be the one, ultimately, that will make this call. Does he want to poke the NFL for messing around with him and work as the meddling owner and say, you got to sign this guy? It's just business. The most divisive guy in football. You're going to bring that guy in? Are you going to do it? Are you going to go down that road? Uh, so we'll we will find out. But it, it's it's an interesting story. I think this it's it's not going to happen. I'd be very surprised if the Raiders sign Kaepernick. But they worked him out. So we'll see where the story goes.